Hey, what's going on? I am doing Are They Real or Are They Agents? Gonna drop the name in a minute. I will say this. I've evaluated these people for years. You know, and like a lot of uh, people on YouTube and elsewhere, <clears throat> usually in the media, sometimes you start thinking people are real because they, they talk a good game. You know, they, they, they sound mean, they sound good, they sound serious, you know? So you got to even watch out for the people with the calm voices sometimes. But like I always say, you ask a few questions, you'll get answers, you'll understand what people are really all about. Now, before I go into it, let me say this. People have been asking about the donations. How can I send a donation? <clears throat> I don't have any water today. Might be good for some people. <clears throat> but um, Google Pay right now is the best way to uh, send a donation. They don't take anything out, and it's instantaneous. So you can still go on the GoFundMe link to read what the fun funding is all about but pay with google pay that's in the uh, descriptions and uh, before i go on i also want to make one thing clear i watched the video with Tariq nasheed concerning the aretha franklin funeral the first one he put up you see he's trying to be slick trying to touch yeah that's an athletic female right there. He's trying. <laughs> damn, she works out. Must be a gymnast or something. If you can see what I can see. God damn. I don't know if that's a white girl with a tan or a black girl. Hard to tell. But anyways. Yeah, her muscles look more powerful than mine. Shit. God damn. But, um. She has to be a gymnast. With a body like that. But, anyways. Sorry about that. Anyways, Tariq Nashi, what he was talking about is he was saying, uh, he was touching on some boule stuff, which is safe, and you know what he does, because this is how you can tell coon agents, because they always want to talk about something that's touchy. Then they shift the blame onto somebody else, so you can make sure that they say, hey, I got this from this guy. That's why he brought up Steve Coakley. And uh, I noticed when he was talking about the the Korean hair salon, whatever you want to call it, hair store, hair piece store, and he was talking about the guys trying to defend the women and then the uh, light-skinned one coming out. I was waiting for him to say, it's always the mulatto ones trying to do the most. But I knew he couldn't say that because of his wife. So he called her light-skinned instead. That's how these jive bastards get slick. That girl's obviously half white and she didn't need a damn hair weave. So I don't know what the hell she was mad about. It's probably another stage event for all I know. But see, he gets slick like that. And um, I really bring that up to say this because I was listening. And then I said, damn, p people think that Tariq Nashi doesn't steal my ideas, my talking points, and other people's talking points. Now this one. I know for a fact you can't deny it because he was talking about the Mexicans and the immigrants taking jobs from black Americans and he said exactly what the hell I said exactly when I said you used to be able to get a fallback job at a McDonald's or entry-level job he used the same fucking words verbatim and I'm gonna I'm bring I'm gonna hit a whole run after this after I make this point he used the same words verbatim that I use, entry-level jobs, uh, they're taking jobs from us, and it's all going on before our eyes. He stole from me. These guys, they listen. You already know one group, listen, you thought I was bullshitting. They listen. And believe me, this next group I'm going to bring up, they listen. And I don't care if they, they can go all out, because in a way, that's what I want, because I want these coons to be challenged. Because once they're challenged... They'll get that beat down. They'll get exposed. But anyways, let me hit this home run on Tariq Nasheed because he was talking about uh, Aretha Franklin. 
I told you, he, he just goes on the internet, takes people's talking points, not just mine, every, a whole lot of other people's, Neely Fuller or whoever the hell else, makes some good points. He's like one of those students in a the class. They come with some bullshit research and try to talk like it came from them in order to pass the class. That's what a Tariq Nasheed is. Now, he was talking about Aretha Franklin. He's like, oh, man, she had a hell of a life. She had a wild life. And he started bringing up her father, the church, Sam Cooke, Ray Charles, Billy Preston. And I said, uh-huh, uh-huh. Quote me on this. He got that from a 2014 Daily Mail article on Aretha Franklin when that book was coming out on her. He got it from that article, and I know because I was just reading this shit a couple of days ago. Because I wanted to look up and see if, if it was true that her first son was her father's son. According to that article, they say no, but she named him Clarence. I'm still inclined to believe that must have been it, but it was a freak show. That's how Tariq Nashi. Go to that Daily Mail article. I think you look up Tariq, uh, Aretha Franklin's first son is her from her father or something like that. Then you'll find a Daily Mail uh, website. By the time I do this, I might link it up. Go back to that Tariq Nashi video. Listen to when he starts talking about Aretha Franklin's wild life. He talked about the pictures, every article. He's, and he, he, and then this is the proof that you could tell that he steals other people's ideas and then just comes out and act like he's a master of knowledge. Then he just recites it. This is a uh, plagiarist. He just recites it and said, acts like he came up with the stuff. When he mentioned Ray Charles, because they said Ray in the article, which is pretty odd, they said Ray Charles witnessed plenty of orgies in uh, C.L. Franklin's church. I know what you're thinking. Yeah. How the hell does a blind man witness anything? <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. Then they had talked about Billy Preston in the article. Line for line, he went down the article, went down the pictures. Then he talked about her first husband who was a pimp in Detroit. You know, he always talks about players and all this kind of stuff to act like he's some street dude. And then he said, I was born in Detroit. But then again, he said he was born in Alabama. Moved to Detroit, then moved to LA. I mean, we don't know what's going on with this guy, but he's lying. Getting caught up in his lies, but... I just had to throw that out there. I'm going to put the link in. Now, let me get on to the main deal. <clears throat> because we got to call them out. Because these people, I mean, let, let me say this. One, uh, this is how I kind of evaluate people. I don't just say, okay, they're saying something I disagree with. So they're coon agents. I, I don't do that. I evaluate their actions. I evaluate what they say and what they concentrate on and what they try to purposely, purposefully uh, leave out. That's what I concentrate on. And in this case, we're talking about the money. It always boils down to the money. You know, I know no women looking like this is living here. I might have to see what's up. Black, by the way, in case people are wondering. Yeah, I could work with that. Anyways, um, getting distracted. So that's what happens when I do it in here. But um, you follow the money, not the fact that they're asking for money. If they don't tell you what they're doing with the money or that they plan on doing something in particular with the money, that means they just want the money for themselves. You can tell when they come on Tariq Nasheed and this group I'm talking about. When they literally come on every other day, if not every day, trying to act like they're kicking knowledge. When all they're doing is trying to get that super chat money. Because they say, if you can't super chat, at least get the likes up. The likes. That's another key. When people tell you, let's get those likes up, you know what they're all about. They just they don't plan on doing anything for you. They're all about YouTube celebrity, YouTube money. 
That's it. And uh, that's why I say follow the money. These people, and if you don't have a clue, they try to hustle you. They try to say, for your super chat, I'm going to give you a bullshit postcard. See, to me, that's like some Channel 13, PBS, uh, what do they call those shits? Fundraiser, telethon thing. But at least, you know, they, they'll give you a DVD or something like that. You donate a couple of hundred dollars. <laughs> Even though you can just buy the DVD cheaper, but, you know. But a fucking postcard. How many people send postcards? Not that many these days. And a postcard with that picture on it, for that matter. So you got to understand. There are a lot of bullshit artists out here. Con men. Frauds. Again, I've been watching them for years. See, here's the thing. I'm going to mention the name in a minute in case you don't get it already. So you got to watch out for the money. Watch out for what they keep trying to preach. In this case, their, their fundamental preaching, brainwashing propaganda is black people go to Africa. Black people, you have to move to Africa. If you can't, make it in this country and you don't have a good relationship you move on but why do they want you to move on to Africa they call themselves what do they call themselves black African what is it intelligence organization or some shit like that B-A-I-O yeah that's what I'm talking about and I'm talking about whole lip -ism. And I'm talking about the search for ye who rule. Did I sound African when I say that? You who rule. <laughs> See, that adds more dramatic effect to it, you know? Helps in uh, people conning people, <laughs> trying to act like they know some African language and shit. Now, the funny part is that I know they'll respond. They may not respond because they know if I respond, whoo. <laughs> But let me tell you something about this because I have what people call troll accounts. And I'll go on people's live streams and I'll ask them questions. I won't necessarily talk shit about them, but I'll ask them questions. And I notice when you ask legit questions, they don't answer the questions, they avoid them. But they'll answer the easy ones that play into their propaganda. But when you ask something hard, they act like they didn't see it. That's how you can tell what's up. And you keep asking the questions. They block you. They block you with the quickness. And the reason why they block you is because they don't want those kinds of questions out there. And then when you got then you gotta be slick with them, trick them in order to stay on, which means kissing their ass, or you gotta talk some shit in order to get them to talk. And then, even when they talk, they still act like they didn't, uh, they say, oh, I heard you. I see your question, you bastard. Call you all kinds of names. That's, that's clue number one. That they don't, they're coon agents. They got propagandas and agendas because they start calling you names just for asking a question. Then they act like they forgot the question because it, it just got deleted. And then they say, what was your question again? Yeah, yeah, in case my man got some, uh, his memory's getting jogged, yeah, yeah, that was me. Uh, then they say, what was your question again? No, and they just blocked you, but I come back with another account. I got secrets on how to get back on, uh, and I'm not telling, because <laughs> we don't need people to tell. We need to be able to get back on to these, uh, fake bastards. So they forget the, the, the question, then you got to come back on in a different name, ask the question again, but you get blocked quick. And then after you get blocked, then he says, oh, to the, to the mod, don't block him, I want to hear the question. Only one time did the mod repeat the question. All the other times, the mod just blocked. And they act like they're getting rid of trolls. That's what they call people who disagree or who bring up different issues that oppose 
their views. See, people like me, we don't, I'm not the only one that was on there. People like me, we, we're not trying to oppose them just to oppose them. We're trying to ask questions to gain understanding in their position. But if they refuse to answer questions, then we have to ask, what is their position? Is it what they claim it is? If we can't talk about something else in relation to your claims, then how valid are your claims? Like I always say, people can't ask questions or answer questions. They're hiding something. You know that when you go to when somebody goes to court, you know about O.J. Simpson, Mark Furman. They ask some questions. Did you call somebody a nigger? I plead the fifth. Did you do this? Did you do that? I plead the fifth. I mean, we already know when people refuse to answer questions, we already know why. Because they might slip up and say the wrong thing. That's what pleading the fifth is. I plead the fifth on the grounds that I might incriminate myself. <laughs> you know, they might say the wrong thing that goes off the script, off the game plan. And in this case, whole lip ism. He did say something that went off the game plan because I made sure I got a question in. And the other day they had a live stream. And I said, this guy already said this. And then people are like, no, he didn't. This is how you know they lie. I asked the man, he responded on air. I'll try and find the video, but it's a video in the last couple of weeks, maybe three. When they say the trolls are out tonight or something like that. And um, I kept talking about what well, these guys keep wanting, keep begging, keep harassing, keep making propaganda videos, trying to convince black Americans to go to Africa and set up shop for some goddamn reason. Keep in mind, these are red, black, and green Marcus Garvey people. Keep that in mind. And they want an African state. That's their whole thesis. I want an African state independent of the white man. Land in Africa. Now I ask this whole lip ism who claims he's not the leader of this so-called BAIO. He, matter of fact, before I get to that, he even said, our focus is in Africa. But the name of your group is, was it Black African? Uh, whatever the fuck it is, organization. You can look it up. The red, black, and green, the African uh, continent, African in the name. I mean, well, what more do you need, man? Come on, man. You're not fooling people. You're only fooling idiots and dimwits. Come on. So he's like, we're not about Africa anyways like that. See, I make myself clear I'm only for black Americans. That's clear because we waste our time worrying about Africa and every one of these videos that these guys put up it is like I tell you they never talk about black America they only talk about us when it's about helping the Caribbean helping Africans or going to Africa they never say Africans Caribbeans help black America I don't think these guys are black Americans whole lip ism he's from Brooklyn so he's probably a Caribbean right there most of the people that come on their little whatever the hell it is, they're either African or Caribbean. That guy Dynast, I don't know. He that no, it's hard to figure out with him. Might be African for all I know. But yeah, I'm calling them all out because I have to. So whole lipism. I asked him a question. I know he's gonna say, "Oh, so this is the guy." Yeah, this is the guy. I mean, people think I just sit back and uh, evaluate without interaction. Believe me, I try to interact because I'm trying to get gain clarification. That's what I'm trying to gain. And if I can't gain clarification, something's up. So I said to him, you keep wanting black people, black Americans, because again, 
That's the target audience. Black Americans, they keep telling us or trying to convince us to go to Africa. Why? That's the question. We know why. Because they're coon agents of the white man. That's why. Most black Americans can give a damn about Africa. Most of us aren't even trying to move there. And the ones they keep showing who move there, they could be fugitives for all we know. Shit, one guy had a tooth missing and shit, talking about he's a millionaire and shit, or rich in Africa. Man can't even speak well, and it, he has a tooth missing. They keep saying you can live well in Africa, motherfucker, you can't even get a, uh, your, your tooth uh, fixed in Africa. Come on. Shit, he probably went over there to, you know, for a drug rehab or something. You know, his best route for getting rid of the drugs was to get away from the drugs. And Nigerian, and, you know, they went to Nigeria. Nigerians are into cocaine shipments too, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but um, I asked him, hold up, ism. You keep telling us to go to Africa. You keep trying to convince us to go to Africa. But like other people with other campaigns, I asked a simple question. How come you have not packed your bags? How come you're not in Africa now? And they say, I've been to Africa. I said, that's not the question. Visiting is one thing. You're telling, trying to convince us to move there. So why haven't you moved there? I pressed them. Had to keep making new accounts in order to, <laughs> to get the question out because I kept getting deleted but he, he finally had to break down and he said I don't plan on going to Africa <laughs> he said I never said I was going to Africa so if you didn't plan on going to Africa and you never planned on going to Africa why are you trying to get other people to go to Africa this mirror is Marcus Garvey you know Marcus Garvey could have gone, but he didn't go. But he kept trying to convince black Americans. Again, the target audience, black Americans. That's why I say this all stems from some, has to be British related. Because the British, the one thing they, they were very good at above all others was colonizing land. Spain was good at conquering land. Portugal was good at taking parts of land. But they never really, you know, they were first out the gate. So, you know, they had to learn trial by error. Spain learned from Portugal's mistakes. France, Netherlands, all these others, they learned from them. And of course, the British, they learned from everybody else's mistakes and said, OK, we're going to do it this way. People think it's unbelievable that the United States being as powerful as it is that you wouldn't have a weaker nation not, eager, not economically but militarily trying to subvert the United States to take it back into its imperial fold you know I keep running into so many British people you can't tell me when they come here and it's called New York you can't tell me that they're not saying to themselves, man, this was our shit. Of course, when they had it, it wasn't looking like this. New Jersey, New England, Virginia, Georgia, all these names, Washington, D.C., Prince George's County, Queen Anne County, Baltimore, Come on, Pennsylvania. When they see all these, see in the West Coast, Southwest is Spanish names because they just took that. But when they see these names, if it's not a Native American name, it's usually a British or a French name. Or a Spanish name, depending on where you're at. And some leftover Dutch name. You can't tell me they're not saying to themselves, this was our shit, and they keep sending their people over 
trying to subvert because they come with money, they come with the slick talk, and they're not really watched as much as others. You know, when they see names, not just New York, but other names. You know, I just learned Stanford. I was watching some video, Stanford, Connecticut. Named after someplace in Stanford, England. New Jersey. Named after some Jersey place in uh, there. Greenwich, Connecticut. Greenwich, England. Even Boston. Named after someplace in England. You know, with all these different names, you're like, damn, the UK doesn't even look that fucking big, but yet there's a whole lot of names. New Brunswick, New Jersey. Windsor, New Jersey. Windsor, Connecticut. All these names. And Lord, Lord Baltimore. Can't get any more blatant than that. I mean, come on. Maryland. So it makes sense that imperial forces of the British would employ Negroes from their colonies to come to the United States and work on the Negroes in the United States. Could be uh, 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 on behalf of the American and the British government, for all we know. It sounds far-fetched, but trust me. There's a reason why these people are Caribbeans. And not black Americans. Gotta be a reason. I mean, the MO was clear. These people keep coming here and they're trying to tell us. They're trying to convince us to leave. This B-A-I-O, this search for you hoo I rolled my R. You hoo-roo. <laughs> uh, they keep trying to make propaganda videos like infomercials. This is why you need to go to Africa. This is why you need to go to Africa. Get your ass to Africa. But they never make a goddamn video. This is why I'm, I am in Africa. This is why I have moved to Africa. <laughs> they never make those videos. The only videos they show... Are videos that say, hey, I have visited Africa. And in case you don't know, in previous videos when I mentioned slave forts and people making videos on slave forts, I'm talking about them. That's what I'm talking about. That's propaganda video. Who's behind these bastards? Because nobody just comes out and says, hey, I got to make propaganda video after propaganda video trying to convince black Americans to get their asses to Africa. While Afri they even get testimony from Africans. Come help us. Come help us. What do we need to come help you for? You're not our people. That's not our land. When this guy keeps making his videos in Nigeria or Ghana, I mean, go, go to some other place. Go to some place where they don't speak English. That's what I'm, I keep waiting for these bastards to do. Go to some French-speaking country, Arabic-speaking African country. You notice these people never go to the North, North Africa. The, the best they'll do is go to Egypt and visit the pyramids, the sites, and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to that race talk, that brother and sister shit, I don't hear that shit when they go to Egypt. So I know that his uh, crew, they already said they're not going to Egypt. <laughs> so... It begs the question once again, what are they preaching and why are they preaching it? But uh, of course, I'm giving you some answers. And people who keep saying I'm hating on Caribbeans. No, just like my man Edek said, I'm not hating on anybody. I never said I hated any Caribbeans. You can't find me saying that. I said I can't stand these bastards. That's what I did say. But that's not the same as hating. I said, I'm tired of these people. I'm tired of them harassing us. That's what I said. But you never heard me say I hate them. You know? So. <laughs> oh, shit. I know I ain't, that ain't who I think it is. It might be. That's crazy. If that is. Anyways. I never said I hated these Caribbeans, but I am sick and tired of them harassing us. Because these people are not going to Africa. You go. These search for you. Who through 
Uh, they make videos in Africa, infomercial propaganda videos, trying to convince us to go to Africa. The last one I saw, the guy <laughs> went into some backwoods with some goddamn uh, lady selling corn on a grill. Then the guy bought some corn from the lady. And I noticed that the African guy picked the shit up with his hands, not from the uh, end, not from the stick. He picked the shit up from his, you know, from the part you eat and handing it to the guy. And I know the guy was like, damn, I don't want to eat this shit. This man got dirty hands and shit. But he wanted to act like he was respecting these mighty Africans. So he ate the shit anyways and tried to say, oh, yeah, this corn is good. This is the reason you need to come to Africa. Move to Africa. Get some fucking roast corn. You could get that shit at a fucking store. For real cheap. <laughs> I mean, the fuck you gonna go to Africa for just to get some fucking roasted corn? In a fucking backwoods. I mean, everything he's been showing about Africa so far is not a turn on. It's a motherfucking turn off. Because when you, you watch those Nollywood movies... The Ghanaian movies, the African so-called movies, that's not even filmed on film. So I, I don't consider those movies. I consider those soap operas or some shit like that. I told them that too in their comment section. They don't care because they're making enough money right now. I said, God damn it, get, get some 1080p and make it look like some film or something, you know? Now you got to get 4K. They got old time cameras and shit. I mean, God damn from what I heard, they make enough money to go get them some state-of-the-art motherfucking cameras. And their locales are always in some dirt road, some Detroit uh, blighted housing looking uh, area. Hell, even Detroit look nicer than that. The blighted housing area, shit. <laughs> I mean, right now, you're going through the woods, they don't cut the grass, they don't maintain shit in these countries that this guy keeps going to. The roads are crazy as hell. Dirt roads. People walking in the roads with the cars and bikes rolling in the roads with the with the cars and there's no lines on the ground on the roads to tell you where to go. I was watching one video. Some lady made some uh in Africa she made some headlight, some robot uh traffic lights. I said that's cool. You know? But it goes to show they ain't even have really traffic lights like that. There's no rhyme or reason to Africa. Now, I see videos on Ethiopia. They said that's one of the poorest nations in the, in the world. But I will say Ethiopia looks like a place I could better go to and feel, okay, well, this isn't too bad. Because their roads at least look like they were in order. You know, they don't keep the places clean, but... It looks cleaner than Nigeria, shit. <laughs> For what they do have clean, you know. I, I know there's a lot of prostitution in Ethiopia, which you shouldn't let your people get to that point. I mean, some of them are drug addicts too. You know, that's something you hear the world over, you know. But my point is, they keep trying to sell us on Nigeria and Ghana, the same old countries. And I told you it's the same old two countries because they speak English. That's the only reason why they keep bringing up those two countries. They never bring up Mali, Niger. They never bring up Mauritania, Algeria, Sudan. None of these places. I, I stick to the West Coast. Uh, it's always so-called Sub-Saharan Africa. And the funny part is a lot of the countries that's in Sub-Saharan Africa are in the motherfucking Sahara. So you know the, the sub-Saharan shit is race-based. That is who controls the country because you got to keep in mind still the masses of these countries are still black or black-like people. It's the governments that are different. Because you look at Mauritania, you know, they have, I don't want to call the people Arabs, they say some of the people came from Yemen. But some of the people have a straight hair, some mulatto government, some people have... I'm sure they're probably Turk related but they claim they come from Yemen but the Turks rule Yemen too and uh, 
that government is a mulatto government. They want to call them. Some people won't want to call them Berbers, but uh, there's no evidence of that. So, but the masses of the people in Mauritania are black and African. So you know we're dealing with places like the Dominican Republic that mimic uh, some of these African countries. You know. Oh, they're white girl. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. This white girl working with a little something. <laughs> I know some people are like, ah, I don't care. I'm just saying. But anyways, <clears throat> these um, these guys, man, they they, they want to keep putting you in Ghana and Nigeria, so you can search out your African roots. Why would you search out something that you have no knowledge of? I see somebody else parked a long time ago. By the way. Staying in their car because they see me in the car, so I guess they're getting scared. Like, oh, okay, maybe I should wait until he leaves. He might try to break in my whatever the fuck kind of car this is. It looks like some bullshit. I'm going to stay here as long as it takes. Anyways. They keep trying to get us to these whack-ass countries where in Nigeria, the, the women bleach their skin. Uh, they wear tacky weaves and wigs. I mean, you got to get them under control first. You got to get the Caribbean people to get down with their Caribbean people and tame the uh, Spanish-speaking Caribbeans. Get them in tune with their blackness before you come to us. You know, don't come to us with this bullshit. You come in here trying to take our spot. That's what it is. And again, this has been going on after slavery. That's when it started coming into uh, progress. So you got to keep in mind. I tell you, the British fought the colonials uh, you know you can call them Americans all you want to 1776 1812 then when Lincoln got killed what happened he was watching something called our American cousins and then they talk about the special relationship between the United States and the UK that's what we call subversives. That's what we call brainwashing because they want to keep reminding the United States you were once ours. And we're going to stick close to you so we can get, get it back. You know how the British operate. They use anybody to get what they need to get. I think in, in the, during the Civil War, they use black slaves. They say, hey, man, you jump on our side, help us. You'll get your freedom. Some black slaves did it, even though when you think about it, uh, <laughs> if the British won the war, would you get your freedom, number one, since technically they're the ones who enslaved your ass in the first place? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's what you got to think about before the uh, U.S. broke away. And on top of that, that's if you make it out of the war alive. You know, if you get killed during the battle, getting your freedom wouldn't matter at that point. So my point is, they'll do anything. Use any tool, propaganda, money drugs, all types of shit to, to take a land take a country, you gotta work and listen to see how people colonize countries that's why I, I keep telling you, I read on Rome and and uh, see how they colonize countries and what they thought Rome clearly saw weaknesses in the people they could conquer and it, it, it if it took them years to take what they had to take They'll take years. The Punic Wars. A hundred years. I mean, come on. That's about, what, five generations. People who started the first one didn't live to see the last one. You know? That's the one thing I can say about the white man. He, he won't give up, man. <laughs> He'll wear you down. That's a part of warfare. You don't necessarily have to go into combat, but you get worn down one way or the other. 
and you have to outlast or be able to combat the situation. So this is what they'll do. You know, they'll, they'll wear you down. They'll try to subvert a country. They'll do whatever it takes to get it. That's what made the British more successful than the others because the others, they use brute force. You saw in Vietnam how the French started losing possessions to war. That's why the British said, you, okay, some of our colonies will um, let you gain your independence. We'll let you get it without going to war and miss being defeated in a war because that doesn't look good. That's not good for white power. That's why the United States swooped in right after the British got their asses kicked in Vietnam. So that's not to say that some, the British didn't try to fight some people to keep their colonies in Africa or other places. But they figured, okay, it's better to just leave. Even with Hong Kong, they knew they couldn't fight the Chinese. The Chinese are nuclear armed and they can reach anywhere in the earth and they have a lot of army, a lot of people. And it wouldn't be a guarantee that the United States would have their back if the British tried to set it off. But then again, you know what? I'm going too far into that. My point is, <laughs> these guys keep trying to get you to go to Africa. The main thing is to remember, this is why you ask questions. They did not, they made sure that they told you after, after they were pressed that you, they are not going to Africa themselves. They're never moving there. Like I said before, when someone tries to pressure you into doing something that they will not do, you got to ask yourself, what are they looking for? What are they looking to accomplish? They didn't even say, if you move over there first so we can see how it is, then I'll move. And the proof of that is they were interviewing so-called, I don't know if they were black Americans, but they were black people who claimed to be from America. Doesn't mean that they were black Americans, though. Who moved out to Africa. One looked like he was driving a cab. If you're driving a cab in Africa to make a living, God damn. You might as well, you might as well stay where you're at. You know? And I, I said the other guy with a chip tooth, the other, you know. So, clearly these guys are trying to make propaganda videos to tell, try to convince us or to target demographic of down and out people who, who have bad credit and all that. Figure, okay, let me go to Africa and see what I can do. I, I'll strike it rich. No, you won't. These guys look like they were struggling, even though they claim that they were not. And what they do is they say, oh, Africa's a great place to raise a family. Really? They can't even feed themselves. I mean, come on. They're coming here. They're going to the white man's nations. But Africa's a great place to raise children. Come on. After these guys interview these guys, they see how these guys are living. And you know what? They still said, I'll be damned if I go to Africa. They didn't say that, but we know that that's what they're thinking because they didn't move. <laughs> I mean, you know, just like I know when you see images of Africa, we always ask the question, damn, these motherfuckers don't have anything? How come they can't at least keep the place clean? If nothing else, it's just like living in the projects. If nothing else, you could be poor, demoralized, or what have you. As long as you keep the place clean, it can change things in your mind. It can at least make you feel proud of what you got. But when you don't, you're not feeling proud and you keep it untidy, so to speak. Come on, Africa, they don't cut grass, they don't paint shit. I mean, damn. Nobody's going there. They're not going there. We all knew they weren't going there. So, I don't know why they keep going there with that bullshit. But the shit isn't working. But like I said, with a lot of these people, just like these BAIO whole ism and I keep saying them separately because they keep trying to convince us that they're all separate and nobody's the leader. <laughs> but somebody's getting that money. They said that they don't even 
care about donations. But they're on almost fucking every day. Making sure they shout out that super chat. When you hear that, you hear the likes, you know what's up. They're getting money. They're not using that money to get to Africa. What they do is they talk about, oh, I, I just got a new camera. Give you some better quality next time I go visit Africa. Well, the camera is all good and well. But at the end of the day, the camera is yours. <laughs> I mean, uh, let's, let's get real. The camera is yours. So stop bullshitting and tricking the people. It's just like some guy, you know who I'm talking about, switching shit up. He used to criticize me for asking for donations and try to discourage people from donating. Now he's talking about, I want to set up like Saad Netter. I want microphones and shit like Saad Netter for what? To entertain? That's all it's for. You're not going out on the road and doing anything. You know, Sonetta does what he does to get his hits and get content out there for YouTube. That's as far as it goes. So, I'm really tired of these red, black, and green guys, man, because they're full of shit. Uh, you, when you pull the covers back, you'll find out that most of these guys are not black Americans. Most of these guys want us to go to Africa when they don't talk about why Africans and Caribbeans keep going to various white man countries. Does that make sense? These people who claim to be so pro-black, the Africans want us to go to Africa while the Africans are saying, let me get the fuck out of here and get to a white man's country. You see what they're doing. I told you this before. They're going into North Africa some of those governments controlled by white Turks that's what I said Turks not Arabs real Arabs are jet black Ottoman Turks are white and you can see if you are good at spotting phenotypes you can still see who are Romanized or from Roman uh, periods especially in Tunisia Algeria you can see the white people there are definitely Germanic. No question about that. A lot of mix and then some are very white. But the point is the Africans, the so-called Sub-Saharan Africans, which there's no such people, by the way, as a Sub-Saharan African. That's another thing. You hear a Negro talk that talk. They're coon agents of the white man. No question about it. They'll play stupid on certain topics, but when you hear what they have to say in depth, and you realize, okay, these people have a lot of knowledge about this, that, and the other. And they come with that sub-Saharan bullshit. That's on purpose. But these Africans will go through war-torn Libya. War-torn, or well, used to be war-torn Tunisia. Western Sahara going to Morocco and all these places. To get to Italy, get to Spain. Get to anywhere in Europe. They're risking their lives. Not just in West Africa, but in East Africa. They're risking their lives to get the hell out of Africa. And things are so bad, you got people in Yemen <laughs> who, who are in a state of war. They're like, damn, this shit is so bad, I want to get my ass to Somalia. That's how bad it is. They prefer to go to Somali, which is in a, still in a basic state of war. You know, they're doing things to improve, but that's how bad it is. While people from Somalia, Ethiopia, Eritrea, they were trying to get to Arabia so they can get to Saudi Arabia. They were trying to get to Yemen to get to Saudi Arabia. Which, of course, lets you know who they think that their people are. I know, I know. Arabia is right next door. I know, I know. <laughs> but I've seen many Ethiopian females in Arabic restaurants. And the Arabs are white, 
Turks, red hair, red hair, white skin, blue eyes. Told you that story before. But the white man has convinced these horned Africans that white people are Arabs and they're not. So it's kind of weird, but I don't want to get into that again. But my point is, Africans don't want to stay in Africa. So why do they want us to keep going? It's clear. They just want us to get the hell out of the United States. That's what the white man wanted. That's what the nation of Islam wanted. Because they're Freemasons. The Moors kind of claim that. That sovereignty bullshit. And I'm glad uh, my man told me about uh, Dane Calloway too. With the Moorish shit. Because if he's a Moor or was a Moor, then that explains a whole lot about him and his motives. Which means that we can uh, get an early evaluation on Dane Calloway and say he's a cool agent too. But of course, I'll still wait. I don't like to jump the gun. Selling that sovereignty shit. And uh, what's that other shit? I forgot the other one. The credit repair shit. Yeah, that's a staple of more shit. <laughs> It's funny, man. It's it's really funny. But you got to be on the lookout for coon agents. Again, I haven't got my influx of uh, donations like I should, or I was getting something to the GoFundMe. They started fucking shit up. Started asking for ID. Then they they, uh, started asking for other shit, which I said, okay, I'll supply that. Then the whole shit got like stuck. On the uh, website. Just got stuck. Maybe I asked one too many questions. I don't know. So Google Pay. See, if I had the money these guys were were getting, I'm not saying I'd liberate all black people, but God damn it, I'd set us on the right path. That's the whole goal. And to keep us away from all this bullshit, this Morris bullshit, this Hebrew shit, yeah, I'm throwing that in there. All this Freemason Flat Earth, this all this bullshit that's designed to do nothing for you. It's designed to take your mind off of reality and concentrate on bullshit. We don't need that. We don't need it. We need to get off of that and get on to reality. That's why when people talk about taking over a state. That's fine if you got a whole bunch of people all in and ready to go. But if you're if it's just you and five people and even those people again, this is the funny part about these people. The people who said, let's take over a state politically, economically. Even they said, I'm not moving to Mississippi. Why should I move to Mississippi? Well, if you're trying to take over Mississippi, uh, what are you going to do, a long distance? This is what I'm saying, man. This is just fucking insane. And it's insane because we're dealing with coon agents of the insane. And I hope these guys view this because I believe that they're sub to me. And I don't care if they unsub, but I know they'll keep touch because they got to keep monitoring people like me the real deal you know and I monitor people like them the bullshit deal because I've seen enough I've been watching them for years I used to get enthralled like see this is what they do they spread that African shit start the videos with uh what was it Neely Fuller quote or Malcolm X uh quote Ended up with public enemy and shit like that, making you think, oh, these guys are for real. These guys are about handling business. But as soon as you ask some questions that they don't want to hear, then it's the same old, you're a nigga. You're this, you're that. You're a bastard, you're gay. You like my eyes, you like my lips. <laughs> this is what they say. Because the questions apparently are apparently that hard. So, again, These guys are being called out. Not They're not being called out because I disagree. They're being called out because I've seen the trends. I've asked 
enough questions and I got one key answer which is I am not going to Africa at all that is all you need to know right there if they're not jumping first <laughs> then you don't need to jump at all if they have people out there and those people said I'm in Africa I'm living there they're interviewing them they saw them and that convinced them to stay their asses home case closed right there you don't need to hear another word from these people because all they're about is trying to convince people to go to Africa but like I said when it comes to propaganda as learned by the white man the goal is it doesn't matter how stupid it sounds it doesn't matter how unrealistic it sounds the only thing the white man does with propaganda is he keeps on playing it over and over again hoping to reach somebody because he knows that there's always a, a crazy person listening and their, their minds will get influenced. That's why you got a lot of these Doc D.R. York supporters still. Because it starts with the insane. You know, they believe the man's an alien, all this crazy shit. They say he's not in prison. See, it starts with the insane. Once the insane are on it, then other people see the numbers and then, then they start saying, maybe I should get down with it. And outside of the insane, then you got to deal with people who might just jump on it just because they want to jump on it or coon agents who are hyping it up too they gotta have the hype man you know like I said before it's like when you see a nation of Islam meeting at the end of the, the meeting they say hey did you like what you hear, heard today say yes see when they tell you to say yes and all that they're brainwashing you giving you commands because they say, say yes. That's the same thing people in concerts do. Say yes. If, um... Damn. If you say yes, then they know they got you brainwashed. I think I explained that in the video. I'm, I'm going to put the other videos up at a later date. I said, I, I said that months ago. <laughs> but, um... They said, did you like what you heard? Yeah, I, I liked it. Because they know, see, they start off like that because they know just by pressure, peer pressure alone, people are going to say, yeah, I liked it. Because you know, most people aren't going to say, nah, man, I didn't like what I heard, man. Because most people are thinking, oh, this brother right here in the black jacket, he said he did not like what he heard. Dear brother, would you like to stand up and tell us why you didn't like what you heard? They know that nobody wants to be called out like that. So that's why they ask these call and command questions, call and response questions, because they know people are going to say, yeah, I like what I heard. How many people willing to join the nation of Islam? And then you hear <laughs> not even half ready for that. Then they say, help us out with a donation today. Five dollar donation, one dollar donation checks whatever then that's when more people are thinking oh shit I got to break the fuck out of here <laughs> you know so and they know that that's why they try to pressure you into giving the donation then when the donations aren't coming then that's when the nation of Islam guy prearranged of course says I got a hundred dollars then they say oh we got a hundred dollars from, from this brother brother uh Tyrone Muhammad and they know they you know the audience is not stupid either Nation Islam makes a mistake by calling out the guy's name because then we already know it's a setup. so <laughs> but this is what they do to persuade you to give and this is what these guys with these red black and green they're trying to persuade you to go to Africa it doesn't matter, even if they know it's like sales or even YouTube hits. Even if you know whatever video you put out, you're not getting a million views on it. Put it out anyways. You never know. It's like sales. Always tell, ask the customer, would you like the meal or the sandwich? Even though you said 
Give me a motherfucking Big Mac. And that's it. Would you like the meal? Or the sandwich? When you just told them, a Big Mac, and that's it. But they figure... They have to ask because they're supposed to sell things anyways. I remember I used to work at Circus City back in the day. And um, they used to always say, I don't want a TV going out that door. If you didn't sell them a surge protector and an extended warranty. And a whole bunch of other accessories. But at least those two. Now, I admit that was a good thing, you know, because it kind of put the pressure on you. And after a while, you know, kind of forced you to say, okay, let me give it a shot. And then you'd be surprised by the power of suggestion and trying to convince people. You'd really be surprised uh, how many people actually bite on it as long as you present it the right way. You know, it's actually shocking when you do it. But when you're scared to do it. You think, oh man, they're not gonna take it because I ain't gonna take it, you know? <laughs> so that's why they keep just coming out with the propaganda. Because if the critics, the ones who get their comments uh, deleted and blocked, they know we're not buying it. That's why they delete us. That's why they call us trolls. They're looking for the ones who say, go ahead, go ahead. That's what they're looking for. And I can guarantee you, at least half, if not 90% of the people who say, go ahead, that's right, brother. I know that's right. I can guarantee you, most of those people, when when pressed and it's time to give up money or join, uh, yeah, man, I hear you, brother, but my pay uh, didn't work out too well this week with a whole lot of bills and shit. But I got you next week. Oh, man, I got you next week. <laughs> Does that sound familiar, people? I got you next week, brother. And, of course, people will try to convince the person, you know, we know you're lying, but we're not going to tell you that we know that you're lying, even though you know that we know that you're lying. So they'll say, hey, brother, whatever you can spare right now, brother. But see, people like me, I know when people are bullshitting. <laughs> so... I'm not trying to sell anything. That's why I keep trying to tell you. I'm not trying to sell. If people are ready to give, they're ready to give. Those are the people who are more serious. And yes or no, it doesn't mean that if you don't give, you're not serious. It just means that if you do give, it goes to show that you're a little more serious. But I'm not trying to force people for nothing. If people say they're going to give and they don't, or if they don't, you never hear me, you never heard me say, motherfucker, give up this goddamn money. That's what these other people say. Motherfucker, give up that money. God damn it, give up the money. You cheap bastards, that's what, that's what they say. They say, give up that money. If you can't give up the money, give us, give us some fucking likes. If you can't give up the money or give up the likes, I'm withholding the motherfucking video. You know you've heard that all from these guys. So, but you never heard that from me. And the main reason you don't hear it from me, number one, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Number two, I don't want to convince anybody of anything. And the reason why I don't want you to want to convince anybody of anything is because I only want to deal with the people who are already convinced themselves by virtue of evidence or lack of ev evidence. Because those are the people who have a like mind, who have a like uh, plan of operations. See, you don't want to convince people who are opposed because those people, that is unless you just want their money, those people are not going to put in the necessary work in the future. So that's why I'm not concerned with those people. So, you know, that's what they do. They, um... You know, they always tell you, get the likes up. All that shit. Come out with a new video. If you give me uh, 500 likes, I'm putting the video up. You know, like I said, I don't know what these likes do. I know they're supposed to promote videos, but I'm guessing likes must 
either get them more money when they go live or something or or something but apparently these people love these likes it's like it's a, a must have so that also aids in the fact that these people are coon agents because people like me I don't know the rules like that of uh, YouTube you know and then you got the Dan Calloway talking about, oh <laughs> that's what that is that the dollar signs the money that, 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 that's, that's the silver chat that's people giving me money oh I didn't know that come on Stop the bullshit. <laughs> I'll tell you on my channel, I enable the super chat. I'm not lying to you. And when somebody tells you, when somebody tells you, hey, I didn't know about the super chat, they're lying. Because you got to fill out a lot of, not a lot of forms, but you got to fill out enough forms that you definitely know what the hell you're doing. And you have to locate it. So they're lying to you. But my voice is going down. I have no water. For some odd reason, September is still in the 100 degree range. Uh, but before, matter of fact, before I close that out, let me say something that I noticed concerning the weather. Is just this has nothing to do with nothing, nothing else. But I just noticed that I see a lot of women, big-breasted women, in particular, wearing fucking. Sweaters, heavy, heavy sweaters out here, man. Uh, at first, I didn't get it because you know you're not really thinking about it. You just see them wearing it, uh, long sleeves, and it's a sweater, thick sweaters and shit. And then you're like, after you had time to think about it, you're like, hold up, because I'm in the car, you know, I'm like, you know, the air conditioner is on, so <laughs> you're not really experiencing that heat like that. And then when you get outside, you're like, oh yeah, man, it's hot as fuck out here. The fuck they got a big ass sweater on for? Makes no sense. I don't know about that, but uh, I mean, maybe some of you observed some of that kind of shit too. I, I don't understand that. But right now we had a hundred and uh, hour and seven minutes. Uh, I think I made my uh, point on the search for you who the rule <laughs> and holism and the B A I O and all their affiliates. Are they real or are they agents? They most definitely fit in the realm of coon agents. Their main propaganda is to try and convince us to go to Africa. That alone makes them guilty. 